This, the new A8, has the greatest capability for autonomous driving of any production car in the world. That, at least, is according to Audi, and even then will only apply once the full complement of 40 plus driver assistance systems get rolled out, after deliveries have commenced early next year. Audi seems proudest of software it calls Traffic Jam Pilot, which allows the driver to relinquish control of this 5.2 meter long, 2 ton saloon at speeds of up to 37 miles per hour, as long as there is a physical barrier separating both directions of traffic. Other autonomous functions will be able to park the car at the touch of a button, even if that involves pulling into a garage, and should greatly reduce the risk of collision, more on which in a moment. When the new A8 arrives in UK dealerships in December, it will do so with either a turbocharged diesel or a petrol V6, making 282 bhp or 225 bhp respectively. A twin-turbo 4.0-litre V8 version will come in 2018, availability in the UK to be confirmed, along with a 443 bhp plug-in hybrid and 557 bhp W12 to top the range. Quattro four-wheel drive is standard, as is an 8-speed torque converter transmission. There's also a new 48 volts electrical system, first seen in the SQ7, that bestows mild hybrid status on the A8 and allows for engine off-coasting and extended stop-start capabilities. Audi claims the A8 ushers in a new era of design for the entire brand, although you could quite easily contest that. The neat aesthetic follows on from the latest A4 and A5 models, with an understated silhouette that uses sharp creases and innovative lighting, the A8 gets optional laser headlights and OLED rear lights that offer remarkable fluidity, to inject some vitality. Step inside and your first impression is of a car built to outlast civilization itself. What the new A8's interior lacks in the charismatic elegance, some might call it chintz, of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It makes up for it in the quality of its materials and assembly. There is no play in the switch gear, no delay in the response of the two superbly crisp central touchscreens and, once you've spotted the billet aluminium armrest hinges, no question that it's all been over-engineered. The many backlit buttons and dials of the third generation A8 have almost entirely disappeared, making way for glass-fronted replacements whose haptic and acoustic feedback has been judged surprisingly well and the wraparound dash really does lend the cabin the lounge ambient Saudis designers speak of. It's an environment that leaves you strangely cool, but that's as it should be, isn't it? On the car's international launch, in Valencia, it's the A855 we spend most time in, Audi's familiar 3.0-liter V6 TDI for the most part making short work of the city streets and surrounding glass-smooth motorways, as you'd expect. Unlike the petrol V6, whose silky character negates the need, it uses active engine mounts that counteract the diesel thrum. It's not a coarse engine, just a little too present compared with the petrol, which spins effortlessly and also lends the gargantuan A8 pleasingly brisk, rather than merely adequate, pace. But what about the all-important ride? This new A8 sits on adaptive dampers and sconced in air springs and controlled by Audi's familiar drive select function, with modes from efficiency to dynamic, each actuating a different ride height. It breathes with the road impressively well, although the impact of running over bridge expansion joints and the like is still felt a little more keenly than we'd expect. Wind noise is also surprisingly loud at higher speeds. In its pursuit of torsional rigidity, Audi has installed a magnesium strut brace at the front and a carbon fiber panel that sits across the rear bulkhead. The chassis hooks into corners neatly during normal driving, its huge coachwork remaining steady once settled onto the outside springs, and the direct, if inert, steering has a column-mounted motor that counteracts the unnatural rate of response brought about by the rear wheel steering. It works well, and the A8 is a dawdle to place between the white lines not to mention more easily maneuverable than before, with its 11.4 meters turning circle now undercutting both the BMW 7 Series and S-Class by almost a meter. Predictably, however, this is a machine that puts up with being hustled rather than enjoying the experience. Carry too much pace and the onset of understeer can be sudden, 
the chunky sidewalls of our test cars 18 and 255 60 front tires tripping over themselves in the face of two wayward tons of high tensile steel, aluminium, magnesium, carbon fiber and, of course, leather. We'd expect upcoming quicker variants, such as the S8, to remedy this shortcoming.